question to the Bhante Dhamma Jiva. When we uh, repeat, may I be free of hatred, does it not emphasize hatred? Uh, what you concentrate on may be, uh, may become stronger, so why not say, uh, may I be free or may I be full of metta? So with the presentation of uh, negativity and uh, positivity, uh, the, the metta, the, here we have to understand the, the perverted nature of our mind or the um, crooked nature of the mind. So sometimes we have to uh, directly address it under such circumstances that uh, most of the hatred we are entertaining in our mind, we do not know. So therefore, there is still you may feel kind of a metta feeling or free kind of feeling, but still the, the underground, underneath uh, the hatred will be there. So, but in a way it is uh, fair enough to say that it not to emphasize the hatred. Not emphasizing hatred, I would say directly addressing to the hatred as such. Otherwise that uh, hatred may, may uh, go uh, remaining underground uh, with a different face value. So you must be directly addressing to the hatred. Uh, this is the way the justification happens. Uh, uh, how can I put it? The metta has two enemies. The close by enemy is the hatred, and behind uh, the perverted idea of uh, lust can represent like metta. So therefore you have to understand the two double game in the metta mind, uh, metta is thing, and they are that not to allow any kind of uh, perverted way of lust or any uh, sexual kind of things to happen, uh, you have to deal with the hatred. That may be the reason, the, the how do you call this, here are the masters and teachers are asking directly address to the I hate to bear such. So, but anyway, it's a good question, good uh, good way of presenting, a good way of brainstorming. So that I presented uh, my views. So if anyone have any kind of other uh, viewpoints. What was the question, sir? What was the question goes like this. When they repeat, may I be free of hatred, that is the way of meditation, yeah, yeah, conventional yeah, yeah, yeah. way, does it not emphasize the hatred? But you uh, concentrate on may be come stronger, hatred may be multiplied. Uh, so why not say, may I be free or may I be full of metta? Instead of telling, may I be full of, may I be uh, free of hatred, why can't we do telling that, may I be full of metta? May I be full of metta? Mm. Is it an auto suggestion sort of? A, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of conditioning of the mind. mind. If there is no hatred at that point in time, then you are saying it. Is there a point in saying me? I, me, I be free of hatred because there's your stream of consciousness is not spoiled with the hatred. Is it not better to say yes, I will. May I be full of metta, as uh, he or she suggests. It's a good uh, that uh, question. Give me a chance to think that uh, under such circumstances, why you are practicing metta? Mm. Personally, if you are not experiencing <coughs> metta, if you have hatred, I mean, if there is no immediate value for metta, why one become, uh, develop the tendency to develop metta? What is the practical value? To make your mind more malleable and more soft, because when you develop metta, the, your consciousness becomes more uh, pure. Uh, so 
so therefore you that uh, what you suggest is even there is no apparent hatred at the beginning you keep on practicing metta like you in your recite karne met sutta you you recite it not because you have hatred because you want to spread your loving kindness towards all beings so in that case in that case good that argument is good in that case uh, the best way is to develop the mindfulness rather than the loving kindness so the concept uh, moral training concentration and the wisdom training the biggest the best is the wisdom training through the wisdom you are uh, how do you call uh, not by just mere conditioning by by but by mere the complete universal mind you make the full of loving kindness instead why you are resorting and going back to the metta bhavana and the sat circumstance you are instead of going directly to the here now i am or oh, mindfulness sorry oh, vipassana that is uh, that's the one way of answering this question so metta is applied whenever it has a practical value practical values we are full of hatred you can't see the view and you are mind is uh, agitated and in such circumstances metta is just like a sinner applying some grease to the cracky noise when there is a hate we are and there friction is there you apply uh, lubricant not otherwise otherwise the best alternative is to go to the inside meditation So metta can only be there if there is also hatred. Only utility value. Mm-hmm. Only when there is a utility value. Therefore, the you must know the mechanism. You must know the technique. You must know the metta meditation as such. You must have some good experience of metta also. But you apply it whenever it is necessary. When the necessity happens, you apply it. Not otherwise. Otherwise, you have a better alternative that you can go for. Then the if you only apply when it happens, then the statement may I be free of met uh, of hatred. hatred is not a metta situation. Please repeat. Now, if you say metta is only present when there's hate, but basically you can only apply it when there's hatred. I will. I will rather edit it. Metta will be more effective mm-hmm. at the face of hatred. At the time, you definitely keep your stream of consciousness with metta, but the effectivity, the verifiability is much more clear when the mind is with hatred. Yes, but what I mean is, if you say metta is the lack of hatred, so basically it's dependent on the presence of hatred, of hatred, then the sentence "May I be free of hatred" is not a metta situation. Because then the metta would only be there if there would be hatred. So therefore, you can say, "May I be free from all the defilements?" Mm. Just not by praying, but keeping the mind here and now. You are doing it, not just by conditioning, not by asking. But then, why don't you? But then, you don't practice metta. Then, in the, if you say that, what is the use of uh, the mere metta unless otherwise it has any practical value? But then, yeah. But nobody asks that question. Who? No, generally, one should ask the question: Why do I want metta? Yeah, utility value. You must ask that uh, I take this if I need any fanning. Otherwise, just holding for the sake of ritualty or on the standing on ceremonies, that, that is a burden. So that is a one kind of a definition. A two way in between the med- the concentration meditation and the inside meditation. Inside meditation is a universal thing. You are directly tackling to the source, not just conditioning and just just shaping the this thing. But con- metta, uh, concentration meditation is just a conditioning and temporary suppression. So when that you do, whenever there is a kind of oppression happens, obsess mind. And then you you must understand this is the question. This is the answer. You do it, compensate it, and go back to your uh, inside meditation. Do you get meditation masters giving uh, people without metta asking them to only stay by vipassana? 
That that Anaparasati yeah. Sutta itself okay. is a very good example. Yes. Anaparasati Sutta is a kind of a situation the Buddha and the other all the disciples, the senior disciples, they are taking some small groups. Yes. And they are practicing three months continuously. Yes. Three and three. Yes. And at the end, end of the day, tomorrow, if the Buddha is to declare now the entities is finished. Hmm. So before that he is scanning through when he is he is a senior disciple known Sariputta, under him ten people are practicing now. Mm. He is the Mahakasyapa and under him fifteen people are practicing. And likewise, he is he, maximum is up to thirty, forty. Yes. That means a very nice group. Yes. And but their minds are really catching up. Yes. But not come up to the maturity. Yes. So if he is going to declare the end of the finish day, tomorrow everything will be scattered off. Mm. So therefore he thought better not to stop the retreat, continue yet another month. Mm. And in that scan, scan the mm-hmm. Buddha see one thing is their minds are half developed, mm-hmm. not fulfilled. The other one is someone is doing metta, someone is doing karuna, someone is doing mm-hmm. metta, all the kind of metta mm-hmm. to allow to complements to, to 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 cater all Buddha recommend me, me, anaparasati. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. Anaparasati on the personal life. Oh, see. That means every development, every concentration meditation, inside meditation will be consummate and come to the peak with the anaparasati. But, but but my question is, the meditation master, uh, you will have so many people who wants to meditate with him. Will a master Depending on somebody, will say, "Well, you do the anapanasati and not sk- and skip off metta." Do you get? I am such a person. Ah, so ah. Whoever come to Nisarna Mani, or whenever I am going to give a retreat, I am telling on point blank, you just sit hmm. and let the the whatever may be manifestation happens. Hmm. Hmm. If it is the break. Instead of contemplating on the here and now, mm-hmm. being, you can just take the breath as your primary object for mm-hmm. rising and falling. That is point blank without mm-hmm. giving any chance for concentration meditation. Mm-hmm. Because anapanasati is the only meditation can cater for samatha and vipassana both. At the same time. Mm-hmm. It's the only meditation, mm-hmm. meditation object mm-hmm. can cater for samatha and vipassana. All the others are either samatha or vipassana. Uh-huh. So therefore, putting into anapanasati is keeping keep, keep that both the doors open and let the natural unfolding take place. And uh, the, to add some more information, while doing anapanasati, uh-huh. if you become irritated uh-huh. again and again to the simple thing, uh-huh. then you have to report to the master, uh-huh. telling that uh, anapanasati is possible. Uh-huh. But due to this factor, that's why my irritation comes. Then mm. both of them has to come to agreement telling that meditation is impeded or hindered, uh, hindered by the irritation, so we have to get rid of that irritation. For that, you temporarily use metta bhavana, uh-huh. and once the irritation gone, again you come back to the anapana. So as you said, it's, uh, that if the car engine goes up and down, the oil is necessary just to keep it cool. So yeah. metta is something like that. Metta is happening when the heating happens. Mm. You have to do by itself engine is one. But if something wrong, you have to specifically see and put the look again. So Anapanasati, the Buddha says, Santocheva Panitocha Sukocha Viharocha, which is by itself Anapanasati is very serene. And it is very delightful. And need not any kind of thing unless otherwise that personal that person has a irritation as a personality trait. And that is that could be the cause for a lust holding. Huh? Yeah. That is the cause, huh? Yeah. Under such circumstances, with an agreement with that particular person, you have to give a special course on Metta Bhavana and once that is finished, again you come to the mainstream. This is a lust course normally in normal uh, behavior. We want to be loving, but it has an emotional loving, you know. I love you, I Self give you music, music. Kind of. yeah, I give you music, I give you a head massage, I give you to eat food, so I am so loving. Reflective. Yeah, reflective. That is the normal method that we, we understand in a normal era. Uh, that is what you call the... the, the but, but that is encouraging lust. Yes, yes. Uh, that is called the, the well, not spiritual mm-hmm. but uh, secular. Yeah, secular. A secular yeah. kind of love is always infested with self love, mm-hmm. self inflicting. So therefore, it is conflagration. When you give, you will get, and again and again, the affection happens. That is always uh, promoting 
each the both parties egoistic idea yeah. and uh, indulgence this kind of so, so the, the no, no. love uh, the altruistic love without the egoistic idea hmm. is called spiritual that has no secular meaning huh. that normally is so it's a nice feeling to feel oh i am giving you music i am giving you so you feel very fine that but that is the normal love that no secular worldly people have you see mm-hmm. i look after you i nurse you i so so that may be understood oh i have a lot of metta you know maybe you know but this is called this is different the creating some defilements yeah. um, uh, undercurrent yeah the undercurrents can go there yeah. but the other other the, the, the worldly spiritual love One, one one spiritual two things. Yeah. World is one thing. Spirituality is yeah. one thing. Yeah. Spiritual metta. We were talking about spiritual metta, na? Yeah. That is called uh, the altruistic. Huh. So one has to understand that. Yeah. And it is very. It's a. It's a huge jump. What? Huh? Huge jump yeah. from the secular metta, secular loving kindness to altruistic loving kindness. Mm. And uh, meditation masters. Oh, psychiatric people, those who are doing counseling, mm. always try to heal the other person. Mm. Whenever the healing happens, this kind of a love develops between these two. Mm. It is always secular. So therefore, even the even the uh, Sigmund Freud he has mentioned, if you are a successful uh, psychiatrist, mm. healing the person, you must understand there is a danger. He may develop lust. to us you and they are going to keep the distance professionally otherwise if you are healing females the danger is much and it's a male still there may be some secular kind of lust can happen ultimately it will hinder block your progress so they are going to always keep a distance so that is why the buddha says your love must be the altruistic one <coughs> the universal kind uh, just like you love your own son or daughter Have the love for all the beings. So this metta that we are talking is about the universal metta. You have, you have to understand there are two kinds, yes. and the first one is easy to understand. That yes. is what you are promoting. Yes. But when, by through that you have to go to the altruistic one. That is a task. That is a, the going to the spirituality and religious kind, and that you know, after long training only you can go into that. Yeah, no, after, after long training, but must be aware. Because no, normally the tendency, like a magnet, take the iron dust. Yeah. Our tendency, ah, look, I'm looking after you. You know, I mean, you don't look like that, but you say, well, inside you, you say, I gave you a toy, I gave you a perfume, I gave you some so money, and I feel that, yeah. and kick back. Uh, so for the Buddha says mm-hmm. that decide by yourself now. Yes. Yeah, Because you yeah. get the kick back, then the promoting your own ego. Up to that, you take the other party as a assertive one, no, productive one. Self love is a part and parcel of the system. That is there. So we have to go be manifest like a love to another person. As far as that person is boosting my ego. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That is why Uchinda Sinaya Matano Usukan Saradikao Panina. He says, get rid of the self love, and then you will understand the universal love. Otherwise, you are using the other person to boost yourself. Yes. That is why we love our dear and dear ones. Mm-hmm. We can't love all everyone together because everyone is not giving the kick back. Is there no stream of consciousness uh, reduces the defilements? Then the there isn't there a um, sort of metta or a so peaceful nature comes naturally. Uh, so not is, actually actively through giving metta, but if you if you are if your kilesas kiles, are reducing, isn't there the sort but of that is you can direct to one person? It is universal, every person. Oh, that's called the universal metta. Universal metta, altruistic metta. But the other one, the worldly kind, the secular kind, I am doing to my son. Some, I am doing yeah. to my daughter. I am doing to my political leader. I am doing to my the super ego. All the kind, so it has always has this egocentric idea. But whenever your mind become pure, it is the universal love, and that is what the religious, the, the original masters exemplify. 
there is no particular person as such, and uh, every it is a uh, uh, widespread for everyone. But the, what really happens is, I want to be loving, and then if I want to be loving, and I'm uh, not very consciously boosting my ego, that will convert that pure, that loving thought into greed and hate, uh, greed and hatred or jealousy and things like that, no? The perversion. Perverted. That's what the perverted nature. Yeah. So that very difficult when you, when, when we are entertaining like that, if I am going to tell you, yes. you are doing is something like that, you will be not happy with me. We don't know. So therefore I but have to be very careful. Though. I have to be careful and uh, to understand when is the time to tell what is the condition and under what circumstances I can tell you what you are doing in terms of the other person, you are, you are developing self-love. You are creating self-love, taking the other part as a pivot and returning back. Well, no. Swami said, but if you say altruistic, you also mean altruistic love then in a, uh, in a quality of worse sense. Because otherwise, um, then it would be selective again, right? Uh, Altruistic altru- love is not selective, yes. Yes. Yeah. So you also have to make sure that if you give, then to give equally as well. Because and if you the material, give, you give the you yes. give compliments. You give the the the, 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 the need, not to the not to the favor. Mm. You you go by for utility value. He is uh, in need. He is not. So I will give that to the other particular person who is indeed. In need. But that's selective again. No, but it has an it immediate okay. meaning. Anyone can understand because he is 30, so I give water. The other person is not, so I give, I don't worry about that. Because that's a meaning. It's, it's a practical, then and there are provable, justifiable, verifiable meaning. In the case, how important for us to think about the Brahma Vihara? Brahma Vihara is in the, still in the secular side. Secular side, that is why it says, Brahma Vyara means that, uh, Mitta Karuna Mudita Upeka. We are using in order to alleviate that particular problem. Mitta we use when the hatred arises. Karuna we use whenever someone is desperately in the need. Mudita when used, then he is well off and then don't do, never entertain jealousy. Instead have altruistic joy. So I have a small question that he asked. Brahma Vihara, but uh, friendly, uh, Metta, Karuna, Mujita, uh, Upeka, why did the Buddha call it Brahma Vihara? Bra- normally Brahma Vihara means this is the place where the Brahma is living. Yeah. Why, did he, why did he call this? The Brahma is that in the Brahma no good and bad, it's a unity. Mm. In the Brahma there is no sexuality, the mm. male and female, it's a unity. Mm. So therefore uh, the developing it, the Brahma Vyara Dharma, uh, it is coming between the complete altruism or complete selfishness. It's a kind of a uh, coming in between. It's uh, only an uh, undefined mind up to the medium level can do it. Mm. Other minds also have kind of a loving kind, of, it is self asserting It is secular. But when you come to the Brahma Vyara, you are free of five hindrances, mm. then you can go beyond the self asserting kind and go beyond, but still you have egoistic idea. Mm. It does not mm. destroy it, mm. so therefore you get, you expect kind something return. Mm. It's, it's a tough thing, but then. Still, uh-huh. still, still you are weaned off. Easy you, are, because, you, are, yeah. you are improved in compared with that self or the, the self asserting kind of love. So self, selfless love can come at a very high level, no? That is, maximum is what is coming from the inside meditation. Yeah, then only it's possible to give no complaint. Ah. It's it's peckless. It's it's pure. Ah. It is very difficult for some man to directly come from this uh, secular love to the the inside love. So in between the Brahma Vyada, the Metta Karma Mudita Upeka, it's like... So when you have... We all have all these defilements, like hatred, jealousy, and all. But still, there's no need to practice all these forms that we have. Only if one of these defilements interfere with our meditation, then only we pick one of the four. That is what I call it is pragmatic. 
is practical, you must first understand the disease, then only you have to decide the medicine. Though the medicine you can buy over the counter, you must not take everything. That is a kind of a waste effort of time. Otherwise, you are not specific to understand why I am using. So then, iatrogenic effect can come. The disease comes out of medicine. Then no one can heal you. Therefore, medicine must be in the proper dose and the proper strength and the proper time dimension. Then it has a meaning. But otherwise, if you are using, since it is over the counter and take it and easily, uh, then developing another kind of repercussions inside. So that is why anapanasati is a very good medium thing when you are practicing. If the irritation happens, ha, you have to understand, you have to apply it in metta. If she has a kind of a desire arises, you have to understand now it is something to think about the repulsivity of the body. And if you feel uh, lethargic and kind of thing to apply the Buddha Nusati Bhava. Or if you are postponing and still and you have to apply Marana Nusati Bhava, the recollection of the day. Likewise, it has, uh, while you are practicing, you have to be alert specifically not on the progress, but about the hindrance. About the distraction it happens. Don't hate the distraction, then you are losing your diagnostic power. So that, that's a big mistake. That, no? is, that, is the, that is the mistake in the meditation, because our mind is to see to All the good things we see as bad, all the bad we see as good. And if you are going to, that observation is okay, but if you are going to take a decision and hard and fast, who the hell can help you? Mm. Yeah, but <clears throat> because of inability, whatever the cause is, you start hating yourself because you want your concentration to be in anapana and the mind is running, you start hating the mind because he's running. Yeah. That's not good. So that uh, when you come to the, uh, in the Satipatthana Sutta, when you come to the Vedana Pasana, mm. the feelings, it says when you the bodily feeling happens, mm. the irritating feeling, unpleasant feeling happens, and definitely you can desperate and say yeah. that after sitting 10 minutes time, I am getting that same bloody feeling and developing agitation. So whatever the way you are going to note it, it never alleviates because you are entertaining hate. So therefore your observation must be double for. One thing is you are observing, then then they are pain. Second thing you have to understand undermining tendency. That I am hating. As far as undermining tendency is there, your face to face observation of the feeling, the pleasure pleasure, painful feeling never worked. So therefore you have to understand whenever we feel pleasure or pain, so always there is an undermining tendency. Pleasurable feeling is with the, uh, the desire. Painful feeling is always with the hatred. As far as you can see this undermining tendency is your meditation is blocked and just, just like a facing a wall. You can't see through it. So therefore when the feelings happen, I mean that mentality come into being, you are noting must be very sharp. Double fold, not only the face of you, but you have to see what is working under the behind the screen. And when that happens, you can easily interpret the other person also. Why is coming with smiling face? There may be some motivation behind that. One day is hating, there may be yet another irritation behind him. Likewise, the, the day you understand your the double fold came in the feelings, exactly the same in the universality in the humankind. Exactly the same. Once you understand, exactly the same the other person. But so the, so I'm in the mind, it doesn't work without an incentive, right? So now yeah. if we do anapanasati, then also we try for this state of concentration, and it basically it's just a substitution for what you what you said yesterday that the mind is striving for something exciting. So this anapanasati state of concentration is just a substitution for this excitement and it's basically you also try for something, you're not just satisfied with just thinking about it. So is that wrong or...? Right? So the incentive you get is the concentration. When the incentive is not there, what is happening is the hate. When you get concentrated, you will be happy. That is what you are aiming at. And when it is not there, it become unhappy, hatred can happen. So, observing this phenomena means that you are observing the mind. It's a great task, it's a great uh, the discovery, it's a great uh, noble quest. But the, the rational mind, the, the, the 
what to call this, uh, secular mind is always due to motivation. It is expecting something back. When it is there, you get motivated, Other, not otherwise. So you, you use the same thing. You ask the mind to be with mindfulness, with the breath in breath and outward. If the mindfulness is continuing, concentration is going to happen. You are the very first person to understand my mind is now gaining the concept. Ah, you are happy. And you can understand this is not only in your mind, this is the universality of the human mind. So why don't you take it and experiment to understand the human mind? Yes, still the, the principle, not principle, no principle underneath. Mm. And meanwhile, you are you are appreciating, you are repeatingly, repetitively understanding the incentives. If the other mind is more going there, if the intensity is there, it will come back. Yes. I have a simple, complicated question. When you say mind, I still can't figure this out. What do you exactly mean? Consciousness. Consciousness. Uh, not everything, not thoughts, pain, or just... You have to, in the, in the Theravada system it says, consciousness is the, the ocean, yeah. and the thoughts are the waves okay. of the same ocean. Right. So you can't see the ocean if there is no waves. But the wave means not the ocean. can see the ocean. If Only no the waves. ocean manifests by waves. Okay. So therefore, okay. so we can we are not comprehending the ocean as such, but by waves we understand it's a water body. Right. Like by the consciousness and its mental factors like thoughts, hatred, all the things are ripples in What the, about physical pain? That is also associated oh. with the mental pain. Otherwise it won't be physical pain, that is why it happened when you that was my question before when you said um, behind pain is hatred. No. Um yeah, I always know behind sadness is always rage, yeah. and, and you call that hatred, but that could also be a physical. Behind any physical pain is also hatred. Yeah. doesn't have to be emotional pain. Yeah. There are two kinds of pain. One thing is physical, the other one is emotional or mental. So, for example, if you are anesthetized, the pain happens, but there is no shadow of the mental kind, so there is no kind of undermining tendency happens. Because your mind is anesthetized. Your physical, mental pain is removed. When one no is counterpart is there. Okay, can you say again? Like, if, what's in that, if, if you hurt your, broke your arm. Yeah. And then you have physical pain. Yeah. And then you have the regret and the sorrow and all the kind of hate kind of mentalities there. You feel sorry. Yeah. About the broken mind. But okay. you'll say that you are being anesthetized and there's no word, no pain. Then you feel no physical pain. No physical pain. Therefore you have no mental pain. Unless otherwise the memory. The memory. Memory is there to color your mind. The memory of the pain you had before the NS. That, that is what we call perception. Your past perception make you unhappy. Otherwise that uh, there had been one girl recognized in the world. She has no pain. Yeah. And yes, it's only there's one book known as The Mind by Richard Prestak. And he has found this pain problem. He has found a girl, it's a Muslim girl, and she has broken her leg. She has no pain, still he, she is playing with the swing. And the parents are telling again and again, and hitting, but hitting won't work. Punching won't work. She appears like very adamant, but she's a very lovely girl because she has no pain. And when the teeth are coming, she's chewing each other. The blood comes, but she's smiling. Because that mind has no memory as such, and the mental, the counterpart of the physical memory also not there, it's a special case, and there you see the pain is such an important thing for our life. If the pain is removed, whole life becomes very pain. The pain is removed, the mind becomes painful. Pain, pain, pain. Pain? Pain, pain, pain. Very dull and very boring. <laughs> and it, everything will be black and white, no colors. <laughs> so, pain is so, nice. so that's not a happy story about the girl. Yeah, that, uh, that uh, the, the writer is not happy girl. I'm not happy. <laughs> I don't know the girl, because you can see there's a white photo, she's playing in the swing and she's happy. 
if the leg is broken and the plaster has put and the parents are telling, please, wait and wait in the bed to feel the recovery. Has she got present feelings? By looking, I, I, she has to talk. Yes, she has to talk. Yeah. She has to talk, but looking at the, these things, she is playing now. The leg is completely bandaged. She is then, and that author is telling that particular girl, she has no, in her memory, in her brain, the second is not working. So therefore our punishment, everything, depends on or valid as far as we are endowed with pain. If there is no pain, no one can punish us. But the life is pain. Life is very done. Life is no, no hit us. But if there, are, there is no pain, it, 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 it's a very dangerous thing. We will, we will hurt ourselves, no? I mean, one fifth of your uh, ego is gone. <laughs> the ego, what you call yeah, Rupa Vedana, Vedana section is gone. Whenever, when we talk about faculties, everybody, we don't include the brain. What do you mean by the faculties? The, 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 it is body. Yeah. Brain is body, no? Yeah. Brain is a hardware. It's a matter. Rupa. Rupa. Yeah. But we need brain also as an like just like the eye or ear or no. We also need the brain to think. No? So thinking, uh, the, the Dalai Lama was asking, uh, that can you find the, the base for thinking as the brain or heart? Because the, uh, the Theravada tradition is attributed to the heart. And the uh, scientists, uh, they uh, will to, they are, uh, the tendency is to attribute to the brain. So still it is not decided. But when an uh, accident happens and uh, part of the brain gets damaged, then one lose also memory. Not all the time. Now they have selected the particular faculties where the memory is related, not only one place. Uh, the seeing, hearing and specifically after the Nazi war, there is a number of people with different damages and they may use that to see which part is related to the hearing, seeing, kind of, and memory also. So memory erase is not for the whole brain, it's a part and partial. But now with the research again and again, they say it's not only one single point, for seeing, they have to recognize six or eight places when one thing is this not working, other one will bypass and do the task. Memory also the same. So basically they, the amygdala and the, the, uh, the frontal lobe, and yet another part has been recognized, they are keep all uh, doing, and the thinking, memory, uh, all these are specific tasks in the brain. Okay. I'm sorry, and that's why I asked, because when I was living in Korea, everybody would say the mind, yeah. and they touched the heart, the yeah. mind. Yeah. So I don't, didn't understand. So that uh, in hugging, in the Pakistan, you keep uh, left, le- left side to the other man's left side, the heart to heart. Hugging. Right. So these are ritualistic or cultural but, things. But they call the heart the mind. They use the word mind for here. In Thailand also, each able and Dhamma books it says whenever I mean heart, that means mind. I mean their culture. That's their nomen culture. Okay. But still it's an open issue because the the way I argue, I am not biased, I am telling you can replace the heart and the blood, still you are the same person. But is it is it because of what you said before that this is the mind because you think with it? If you're thinking That is what the Theravada traditional acceptance. Oh, okay, okay. I like that. Okay. So that through the first meditation I think that you can you can see it when you feel uh, when you improve your feeling, then when you get angry sometimes your heart is beating. And then you you feel it in your heart. You cannot you cannot get any more angry because you are you did it, duh, 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 duh. and from that you can feel. But so I still think still MRI scan, if functional MRI scan say before the heart brain starts storming. Mm-hmm. This also have a counterpart. When the hatred comes, there's a one faculty become very active. And then only to read the message to the to the pineal gland, to the heart, to come. It are happening in a very quick manner. So both of the both of them have kind of a physical changes when the love happens, when the hatred happens. So therefore, the most feeling we get to the gross level is the heart, and the mind also get worked up. 
brain also has some special spark happening. So when you have a complete heart transplant, then right? so you have somebody else sustaining. So that the, if it is so, mind should be changed. <laughs> but the brain cannot be changed. If you remove the brain so far, it's a detriment. So that indicates brain is an essential intrinsic part in the personal likings and disliking and the personality. But this is a challenge to the traditional Theravada acceptance. So that is why Dalai Lama recently in the experiment, he asked the Richard Davidson, can you reduce and come back and say which is more, which is more preliminary, the mind or the heart? He says he have not designed the experiment and you can keep on practicing and then only we have to come to, I mean, we have to get more evidence. So I want to say it could be the heart, it's just a blood pump. No, no, but it's proven that it's proven that the that the mind is determined by the brain activity. Everything what happens between synapses is all. No, that is because right now we have that knowledge. You see, I know a time, nineteen fifty five, nineteen fifty seven, nineteen fifty eight, till the heart transplant was started. Uh, started everybody said life is heart. My, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years, years continuously, when the heart transplant took place, they didn't know where to go or where to hide. Because they said, everybody, I mean, you know, said, my, my, how do you call it, my soul is in the heart. If you go to 1940s, speeches in the church, then if you go to 1920, 1870, where tape recorders are just coming, everybody said, soul is in the heart. When the heart changes, soul should change with it. But uh, what not? I think it's a very no. You are, you are young. No, no. You see the. I think I wouldn't think like that. No, no. I wouldn't say that. Why does it have to have a specific No, no. What you say? No, no. What you? You are a young girl, not sixty years. Nineteen sixty, the first transplant. You see, has to go to the past life. Yes, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. You see, to two thousand, three thousand years, for all long, people said the. The soul idea is transpar the heart is the, uh, see the Jesus Christ will show the heart here. Yeah, the mother, uh, the mother, the, the Maria, yeah. the heart is here, that is the way it is open. But then let, no. me, let me give you an example. For instance, I read an article about a person who died and scientists, they examined his body and his heart wasn't pumping anymore. But what they did was, they still had a sort of a a measurement to measure his energy mm. and when he saw that the brain activity was then after, I mean, after the heart stops pumping, still the blood goes around the body for, for a while and then only after the brain activity stopped, they saw that there was an energy which just dissolved, basically. So it was like an up. So the Dalai Lama is asking this question and then Richard Davidson, he says that one person has written a fiction, a brain in the vat. That means brain is given full nourishment and everything in a vat. And they ask, can the brain survive? But in your case, still the blood is there, therefore mm. heart can go a few seconds. And therefore that uh, Richard Davidson, he says it's a still a fiction. But uh, the answer, I have to give some more information, in our decision making process, there's a two aspects, the emotional part and rational part. The emotional part is attributed to the heart, the rational part is to the brain. So without both, I mean, Mahakaruna and Mahapanya, the wisdom and the compassion, they has to come in balance, otherwise life is paralyzed. So that is why the Saint Master says, whatever the intelligence come into the earth, see whether there is a heart in it. If there is no heart, it's a destructive question. The knowledge without the heart is destructive, whatever the play is. So therefore, whatever the knowledge you have, you must take it. There is a heart. I means that the... the Applicable well, to the world. Well, so heart, the emotion part is seat of the emotion is the heart. The seat of the intelligence or the rationality or deductive knowledge is in the brain. Thoughts. I mean, the, 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 you can thoughts. say thoughts. So that is how, sorry, that is how you can divide into two. And the Buddha, in that sense, he claimed he is possessing Mahakarma Mahapanya. He said, the great compassion and the great wisdom, that is why he can see the world in the balance. Whenever mind becomes emotional, you become blindfolded. Whenever it becomes rational, you become feelingless. What does the Buddha say about Panya Vimukti? Vimukti, uh, free of 
Pajna uh, uh, or free of wisdom. No, that, uh, you have to understand each and every being in the world is paralyzed or either imbalanced, mm. either too much of karuna or too much of panya. Those who have too much of panya and less karuna, when they release, they are releasing from panya. Those who have too much of karuna and less panya, when they are releasing, we can say he is releasing from karuna. That is the way ultimately they come to the same place. But his problem is karma here. His problem is not panya here. Mm. And person with the karuna as a burden, mm. when the release happened, we trace he went through the karuna way. This person went through the mitta, the panya way. Mm. So, vicha vimutti, panya, 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 panya vimutti, cheto vimutti, vicha vimutti, or panya vimutti, cheto vimutti. So, uh, vimukti means free, no? Free. free. No, no, no. Person who is very intelligent, yeah. don't care about the emotions. Yeah. It's always making repercussions, fighting with the people and aggressive kind yeah. of thing, but that person also can go to Nibbana. Mm-hmm. He go to Nibbana by resolving the rational mind, not by the resolving the metta, mm-hmm. the karuna, because this is not the problem. His problem is due to too much of rationality. So, he's going to the, the, his method is we call Panyavi. Uh, the other person entangled everywhere due to his too much of softness, mm-hmm. emotions. Mm-hmm. And such a person also get to go to Nibbana. He go to Nibbana to resolve his emotional aspects. Which is faster? I mean, everyone needs imbalance. Uh. In the world, everyone needs imbalance. No one is equal. Mm-hmm. Equality happens either you are in a jhanic experience or in experience in vipassana jhana or mantra jhana. And intuition and gut feeling belongs to the heart or to the brain? No, gut feeling means the heart, intuition means the brain. Oops. <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, sorry, you can continue. Oh, sorry. But I had read a few times that the stomach is like a, another brain. No, it is the seat of emotion. Yeah. That is the, related with the heart. It's the stomach? No. And that, uh, the, the Richard the Davidson, brain. he has mentioned, uh, when the, when the, big, when the, when the mm. brain becomes part, to the hatred or love or kind of thing, the, the representative part for the stomach in the brain also gets active. I mean, there's a one representative part in the brain, but the, the, represent, the stomach is represented, the stomach is represented in the brain in one particular area, specific area, that also will get activated. The brain is a small man, within that you have a faculty for eye, faculty for ear, the nose, tongue, every faculty is there, it's a, it's a blueprint here. So basically what you're saying that it, all stomach problems are psychosomatic? Now they have all the problems, all the diseases, earlier it was yeah. asthma. And a few diseases found the very quite related with the psychosomatic. Now it is each and every physical disease it's is psychosomatic. psychosomatic. Very nice example it gives. Uh, the Bertrand Russell he came to know this and he wrote all of it. On it. One day he got a toothache and he has gone and sick. And the, the lady doctor, the dentist come and ask, "Dear sir, where is your uh, the problematic? Where is your pain?" He says. Dear girl, pain is in the brain, but anyway you remove the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what about inher- genetically inherited diseases? Yeah. Can you overcome those? That, uh, for the moment it says, by train your mind and change your brain, concept has been accepted now. Change your genetic code? That is also possible. Yeah? Yeah. A genetic code you can uh, say, but pe- a person who, who has full control of the software of the brain might be able to uh, tackle the pain pain well, no? No, I mean, uh, even in the meditation itself, yeah. that is the way understanding the truth of suffering means your tolerance level for the suffering is increasing. Okay. Day by day you are less and less complaining. Pain is there. Hmm. The complaining is disappearing. Who oh, the hell we can complain? We have no creator God to go and complain. You have to suffer. Finish. And the best example is the parturition pain, the labor. It's the most hardest. Even the male can't bear it up, it seems. But you don't complain. Complain to who? And when the mosquito bite happens, you complain. When the cut in the finger happens, you complain. Because you can attribute it to someone, but when the labor pain happens, you know it's very to be a mother, you have to undergo the pain. Yeah. 
Some people go OCC in this event. So if you're complaining a lot, um, which department is that? Which? If you are close. No, if you are. Hatred, you mean that hatred, aversion? Yeah. Is that that? Is that what? No, she's a, her question is, if, if you are complaining, complaining a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah, that means that you are a hate character. That's your hate character? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there may be a, some other people suppressing without complaining, still may be the hate character. They are not complaining as such, but internal boiling and ultimately end up with stress and all the kind of, that's also hate character. Well, then it would manifest in a different way, maybe yeah, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the perversion in a, way. Addiction. But uh, those who are really accept, the, accept the, the pain as such as a part and parcel of the life, they develop a universal love when someone is at pain. It's take as an example, you see. This is not his own mistake, this is not my mistake. If I can do something, why not? That's all. Is this is a Mahakaruna of compassion. That huh? is the kind of way we appreciate the uh, the humanness. All the humans are equal. All the formula is the equal. That some people are too much complaining. Some people are really the tolerating in that, the, how do you call that, uh, forbearance. And the, all the cultures appreciate the forbearing kind of people rather than complaining kind of people. However, I mean, um, you're, okay, I understand that, and then you're talking about need, help those that are in need, so yeah. some people need more help. Yeah. So you have to help them. Definitely. And it's Clearly. Serious. It's but you shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't have some, some sort of stigma. Okay, so, so the, oh, sorry. So there are not, everybody isn't really equal. Yeah. There's different, uh, we're equal on some, points, but there's different levels of, if you want to call them weaknesses and strengths or whatever. Uh, I don't know what, you know what I mean. So no, I there, can't there people that need, there's people that need more help, there's people that need less, there's people that complain, there's people that don't. So that's not really an equality. Where, where is our, where is our, our equality is based on other aspects. A more so fundamental. That's your value judgment that he's screaming and you know it is, he's just making a fuss. He is not really in the pain, but he is a kind of a character always screaming and therefore you don't care. But there is another person who is really in need and when that happens, his anukampa means according to his waves, I feel it is not my will, it is a happening. So then I get moved to him and helping that you can't say it is my quality, it's a nature. But what if you can't tell the difference between those this two? This person I know is daily making complaint. I don't know. I know. I, have, I, I don't get moved. I think I still he is doing something camouflage. So then I still get not moved. Maybe my mind is cheating and my mind is with passion, but Anukampa is another term for uh, the, the compassion. He says when you see, you get moved. Can't help. You have to go there and help. Okay, that is not a human yeah. quality. That is not your personal quality. It's a, it's a, it's a nature. Yeah. So when the mother sees the, the helpless son, that is the Tanukampa that uh, met that Karuha. It's, it's, it's a way of life. The mother has nothing to exert something. It is happening. What if this person... <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that he's camouflaging, he's always complaining. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. But what if, what, and everybody ignores him. And what if this time he really needs help? <laughs> that, that is, I mean, no, hold on. This, that, this actually yeah, happened. That is I'm happening. asking you. That he is really happening. needs help. Yeah. So that and, is you, right. and you help him. So that in, if it, it, is so, it is out of compassion. Yeah. But yeah. everybody else turns away from him. So if it is so, you are genuine. You are, you are really, really sharp to understand his genuine need. He can't understand his genuine one. He's for every time for everything he's screaming. But you have special sensitivity. Now you know he is now in need. So you will be the friend indeed. <laughs> but okay, good. But the other question is, um, say it wasn't life and death, that he wasn't dying, you yeah. know. I mean this situation actually was that somebody was dying. <coughs> But say he wasn't, but he really needed someone and everybody didn't turn their back on him. And it wasn't <laughs> life or death. 
Would I be hurting him by helping him? If he's always screaming? I mean that you are promoting his bad quality. Th th that's what I mean. The that, that's good. That is why I'm being not compassionate, but that is not his mistake. That is your very judgment. That's my mistake. I mean, mistake or quality. So what's the quality? The quality is that you really understand the genuine me, and you go and help. So I didn't end understand it. If you are not understanding that you are flat rate, right, you consider he's always cheating. So if I help him and he doesn't really need the help, so that means that uh, that is mistake of you, not of him. But what is the trait? No, no, no. What is my trait? That he continues with his No, no, the best thing is you must give ten such people to her and and speak to her after one year how is the treatment you are doing. You you must get ten such characters and I will make you the person who will who likes to help them and I will see you after one year how is your you know how is your mental situation? How much you have helped? You know. I think it's, it's okay, isn't she? Oh, I mean, so, so what you're saying no, she's is not making. It's okay to make a judgment. Mm -hmm. He's always complaining. Yeah, yeah, the judgment but, is of course necessary. That yeah. is why we are talking. About. So what you are asking is that whether it's okay to help him. Yeah. Uh, and. My opinion is that it's okay if you feel compassion. Yeah. Whatever his his characteristic, it doesn't really matter. If you are feel compassionate and want and that's to help, genuine. that's what I also said. So that's okay. Yes. You see that. But if you don't need to make a value judgment about whether he is a nuisance or whether he's genuine. No, no, yeah, no, no. You see. If you feel compassionate and really in your heart, that's you are compassionate. You go and help him. No, the point is that no, the, the fuse goes him. away. Yeah. You see, the, you, you, her to be compassionate okay. with a person who's really fallen down and who's making use, perhaps as a kind of means of cunningness or laziness and all that, so you contribute to that person's but laziness. No problem. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you, you know, that's what I'm telling you. No, I'm not saying I'm cunning. I'm saying, I'm saying there's a person who's lazy. Uh, who doesn't want to do anything, but he he can argue out things where he says, "Oh, everybody is very bad to me. Everybody is very bad to me." So you get ten such people, and you have to get a compassionate person and put the compassionate person to them. And what will happen to this compassionate person? He'll bend, uh, go, go to lose the fuse. In normal general terms, you can always show what a compassionate person I am. You can go crazy. Because those people with way, but you still have to help because they are a part of the human beings. So Buddha was always helping people who are sick. Yeah, yeah, but why, I mean, the fact that you wouldn't that you wouldn't help that person with a bad behavior, if you wouldn't be compassionate, that itself would apply that there's hatred. Because if you would be altruistic, compassionate in a sense, you would help no matter what the outside conditions are. Yeah. So you are not. You don't select and say, I help him because I know he needs it and he doesn't. So you would have hatred towards the bad behavior person. Yeah, whatever the hatred is, your fuse will go off. This is what I have seen people who are very compassionate, right? But then that's not true compassion. No. <laughs> no but uh, the one day, I think in the, dis in the discussion itself, this came a very nice idea. And people come and beg you, I have nothing to do. When you are out of compassion and give the money, they go and drink. Yeah. Yes. And the, so the, you gave in terms of money, not in the food or kind of thing. You gave out of compassion and he is taking the drink. But and then his wife come yeah. and tell, wife come and tell, you are the person gave money and now he has drunk it. So therefore, yes, uh, the Buddha says helping others is very difficult. It's a skillful job, but he said, what about helping oneself? Mm. Excuse me? Hmm? One's helping oneself. Yeah. That is the starting point where you can understand how the money mind, cunning mind is. But then it's also a matter of perspective. If you say, com compassionate, I'm compassionate because of the feeling or I'm compassionate because of the effect. If yeah, I don't care about the, or compassion, yeah. If I don't care about the effect, I can still be compassionate and say I only want the feeling to, to exert the feeling, but I, why do I have a responsibility for the effect? So, but anyway, that particular person, if he is going to make this as an excuse to happen again and again to exploit you, that is what the world is, 
That is the, the yes, kind of word. So therefore you are responsible about the effect too. And in that sense, as far as the second psychology is concerned, it's a, such a complication. So that is why the Buddha says, put into yourself and understand. Once you help yourself only, you can understand the helping others. That is why the that, that was the beginning of the sutra. The sutra it says, Sanakana, Sedaka Sutra. Sedaka Sutra. Yeah. It says, the Master says, you please help myself and I will help you. Then the disciple says, Master, the best way is, you mind your own your business. I mind on my business and then that is the way we can give continuity of our acrobat. Mm-hmm. So well, that is why the Buddha says, in a, my, my master give one example, uh, you can see people are sick and all the kind of, they don't know the medicine and kind of thing. Instead you can, you can tell, I can be a mediator, I know the pharmacist and I know the proper medicine and I will give it. And then you start. He is not a qualified doctor. He know only pharmacist. And then when you go in there, I mean, he's doing a good job. And the results also there, but whenever the authority comes, what will happen? You will put into jail. Because you are doing the job without the qualification. For that you have to undergo five years of the medical do- degree, and then only you are qualified to give a medicine to the other. Without qualification, you are saying, I have a feeling these people are suffering, pharmacy have the medicine, I am just giving. Don't listen. It is not applicable because the authority comes and sees you. So if you have real genuine, you have to undergo the medical college and then till you get the qualification, your feeling is maybe destructive to the social system. As well as the social system will be destructed. You are just going out of compassion, but you are not qualified to prescribe a pension. First of all, you have to qualify. There is what is called confidence tricksters. The big companies put advertisements and things that you don't want to buy, they sell you. Uh, then uh, people, some come with very sympathetic, oh, you know, and a big story, bring, uh, win your confidence and you're gone. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, touchy. And people, I, in my own experience, I'm not telling about the monk or anybody, I have come across a lot of people and I have lost money also because of very good confidence. Uh, 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 sympathetic, you know, they win my sympathy and I also very happily say, well, you lose a lot of things. Especially t- when you run temples, you get a lot of people coming there that suddenly they are in, because of the compassionate heart, you have a whole lot of foolish people and when they, then we are finished. I have undergone this. So you have to go to the Nisarno and you know, also. <laughs> really, so much of beggars are coming, then I told what you need. They are asking money. Then I told me people not handling money. Mm. If you need food, go to the kitchen. Mm. If you need water, go and drink. But these things I yeah. have. But this is that is not the case. My wife is sick. I need money. <laughs> so I am sorry. I am not denying it. But luckily I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise they are they are they are giving they bring photos they bring the certificate from mm. the police and everything they when they are opening the mat then I think please cut short what you need <laughs> if it's a bed sheet or so oh, and then I think definitely I can help them. these things we have but if you are asking money then I say you are asking another beggar <laughs> I don't have money. <laughs> I have another question related to the hate. <gasps> where does that come from? The from where from point where are the ego? Where does the, the ego uh, come yeah, from? Yeah, okay, but I guess I want like okay, ego? Alright. I don't right. get it. Like where would something like that come from? The hate that comes from the same point where the love comes. And we like only the love and hate, we never uh, entertain the middle one. What's the middle one? Middle one, no hate, no love. No hate, no love. That is the middle part, the Buddha is prescribing. It is very pale, it is very boring, it is very monotonous. Therefore, we always skip no hate, no love and only search for colorful things. Either hate or love, therefore you get it. No, but it is only pale to the person who has got used to kicks. But uh, for wisdom it is not pale. No? Yeah. But anyway, the Buddha has mentioned not a single sentient being when you give the three combinations, hate, love, 
between the hate and love, no one select the between. Unless otherwise instructed by the Buddha. So therefore the, it, that knowledge is always external. Can you give me an example of someone, a, a situation where someone's experiencing no love, no hate? I will give in terms of the pain and pleasure. The pain is the hate, pleasure is the love. Okay. okay? So, <laughs> when you are, how do you call it, when you are meditating, when you are meditating, you are supposed to experience the breath. Okay, you go and see the gross breath. When you are sitting, you feel the gross breath and slowly, slowly, when you are geared and face to face it, slowly, 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 the breath becomes subtler and subtler and subtler. Yeah. Oh, if breath becomes calm down because you are sitting posture, no much brain bulk, no much of heart work, so when, so when that breath becomes subtle, your, your perception also becomes subtle. You have to be very sharp. So when it is happening, sometimes you feel happy. Now meditation is now going on well. And the good, I can maintain the breath in face to face longer time. And sometimes you feel the breath become pale and boring and monotonous and kind of things. So these things are now played. At a time you are happy. At a time you feel, yes, breath is there, then what? <laughs> when this happens, you are jumping from the head to the love or the gross feeling to the subtlety. But Buddha is asking to continue as long as possible where you don't feel the pain, uh, the, the breath. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So then you can't put it into either pleasure or pain. But definitely you are in the best of your meditation, but you don't feel like continuing because there is nothing to feel. That is what I call no pain, no pleasure. So it becomes like lost. You are feeling like lost. You feel like decast. But actually it's a very high state. Very high state. That's what I'm saying. So that is the what Buddha says, be instructed, get ready. When such a situation happens, don't let the cunning mind to play. Yeah. And try to be the place where are no pain, no pleasure. The, the habit of the cunning mind is pulling you to the disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're in this uh, place, are you, how aware are you that you're in this place? Yeah. Because you, you are coming Very from aware? the cross to the subtlety. You know the path, therefore. You will start with the cross spread and come to the subtlety. And from the pain and pleasure to no pain, no pleasure situation. And the situation is equanimity. And if you know this is the path and that is to be appreciated, you will never go it by without mistake. You only you go by trial and error. And thousand times you will mistake, one day you will make up your mind due to instructions of the teacher, due to your past memories. And you know now, I am reaching a where, point where I can't put into language. I can't express myself, but that is the path. Is, uh, last question, is if, if a beginner meditator goes in this place and isn't aware that's where they are, what do, what might they, where might they think they are? Might they be no, sleeping? No, no. <laughs> might they be either, either entertaining, <laughs> either en entertaining doubts or falling into sleep? or open your eyes, or start breathing, fast breathing, these things are the manipulations of the cunning mind. So you have to avoid all these pitfalls and still walk in the, the, the tightrope walking. Sometimes it comes, but you don't know where to jump to, you know. That's what I'm saying. That uncertainty... How would you know that you... <laughs> no, 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 even, even, even when you meditate, Almost everybody comes to that position, and as the monk said, he feels dull. Now you have to have certain amount of para this kind of ping. Perfect, and you all past memories. In order to get the gem, you get a gem, okay, and then it's very, very valuable. But you throw it away, not knowing ah, this is a valuable thing. So like that, that situation that comes because the habit of the mind is either to kicks, oh yes, I have got it, and suddenly it comes to this very peaceful mind, suddenly you are, you are confronted with a, actually it's a very nice uh, thing, but you have to have recognition to that, it's very nice, but normally we recognize kicks, you know, because of the ego, you have been very egoistic, getting kicks, 
You know? I understand that, but I don't. What, can you describe what a kick is during meditation? Because uh, I, 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 don't, I, 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 I always think of all these of pain, whatever pain, all these irritating things that are happening to me <laughs> that I'm noting. Right? I think still you are at the beginning part, so yeah. you have to understand this is none of your mistakes. This is a definitely good sign, good okay. landmarks, good okay. my spots. You have to be patient and continue further. Okay. When you go there, as far as you are not reacting, they start to settle down. Okay. When settling down, only the problem is the boredom. 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 Monotone. Pain. You feel lost. You feel you are outcast. You feel you are no one. But then from where do you get then the incentive to go on? That is only the discussion. Only by discussion you have to understand your mind is always cunning and you, you it will never go to the middle path. So you have to be prepared, go prepared. Next time when you come up to that level, be prepared. I will not be shaken. This is going against the grain. Never mind. I will take my chance. Play my game, gamble with my life. I can go. That is the boldness the Buddha is asking. That is the way he says that the Sakya Singha the lion's clan you become. Otherwise you are always backward. That is why you have to have a faith, you have to have a moral uh, integrity and pass mistakes and proper instruction and be prepared. Be preparedness is the most vibrating thing. Even the Baden Pala Sami who is introducing the girl guide and the scouts told Buddha also telling be prepared. If you are prepared, whole life is different. Otherwise it's an accident and you will be taken away by the emotions and the judgmental mind. There are no emotion, no judgment, but still you are just like a weak burning without cause currents, it is upright. But I would say, sir, not to wait till the accident takes place, but in these discussions come to know there is a mind where it's completely empty, completely free, and uh, when it comes, you might not appreciate it because of your habits getting no, it's, there's no kick in that mind. So if you understand, I will bring you a shortcut. If you understand this, if you are mani- if you manage to see how inbreath ceases to exist and how the inbreath outbreath is start to in between the acid gap. Mm-hmm. And if you are aware of it, it's a shortcut. That is the point you will not feel. So therefore each end of inbreath is the changing the pattern in the relay race to the outbreath starting. And they are always you find so blank. And you immediately waiting the forthcoming mm-hmm. outbreak and you skip the gap. But because only in the moment of the gap you have no awareness because there's no nothing touching there. Yeah. You can't say no awareness, but no perception, no no gross perception. Well, but you cannot measure it. That is the point of Nibbana lies. <coughs> that is the point where the Nibbana lies, no measurement, no, no conceit. Measurement means conceit. That is something irritating. Something titillating, something theatres, something dramatic. But then you have no consciousness. You can't say so without experiencing it. How can you say? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, conscious, the, the consciousness comes into so life. So you can say that More consciousness is no consciousness. Or something like you have to give a special name, that is why it's called Anidasana Vinyana. Or you can say Nibbana is in the transitions. Yes, 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 you got the point. Yeah? You got the point. Don't miss the chance. So when I am explaining this, the London people gave me an example. I had first three, three weeks and out of three weeks, twenty days retreats. And one person came from Sri Lanka told, you are bloody fellow that using this monk up to the twenty-first day, <laughs> give me at least one day relief. <laughs> so I told, each day we are doing anabana, that day we are just breathing. And I, I am supposed to go to the tube to have a sightseeing. And one day we told, whenever you go to the tube, it is an announcement, be careful about the gap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mind okay. okay. my, my, my the gap. So he said that when you go back after the next day, you will tell that also in your sermons, <laughs> as tried that example, mind the gap. <laughs> well, this is interesting, and I don't, I love to apply microcosm. It's interesting, I have to say, I love traveling. The place between places is 
probably the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> so it is the between two doors, Nibbana is there. Between two mm-hmm. breaths, Nibbana is there. Between two pain and faith, pleasure, Nibbana is there. You're always skipping. You're masters. Skipping from one peak to the other. You never go to the ebb and see what is happening. Because it is boring. So Nibbana is emptiness. Yes, <laughs> That is why you are not chasing back. Actually, between two thoughts, the second thought cannot happen if, if the other thought is the emptiness. You have to go to the same, um, uh, home level and then know the second thought happened, not to thought to thought. Mm-hmm. Always it is come back home and then the second thought. And again come back home. So that, but you are so blind. What if you like come back home? You come back to zero, zero level. Come to the data level. Mm-hmm. And then only go, data level. Zero level. And then only go to another thought and again come back. Oh, okay. So again go there. But it appears like it is peak to peak. Continuation is you see. That is the foolishness. That is the idiot nature. But if you see the fragile, it's called thin slicing of time. If you can cut your consciousness of the thinner most slicing of the time, you can see between two thoughts, there's thought moment which can't comprehend, which can't measure. No ego, no like and dislike, no measurement. That is what Nibbana is. So if you are going fast, you are losing a lot, skipping chunks. But you go slow and full alert, full mindful, then you understand. The best example is if you take a book, in one side you have the back answer, it's a complete flat. Other side you have the one page by page as a cleavage. Thousand and one cleavages you never see unless otherwise you open it. The Buddha says open each and every page as a huge knowledge inside. So So at that point that's where the gap is between the in-breath and the out-breath, that you were going to say Anita Sanavinya, <coughs> is that the place that you, there's no, there's nothing there in, in between those two breaths. Oh, oh, between two thoughts, two thoughts, so there's, 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 there's a gap. So that is, there's no consciousness there. Yeah. No tension, no friction, no, no measurement, no liking, disliking, no ego. It is universality, it is called unsubconscious. The universal subconscious, that, that what is the Sigmund Freud try to explain. We are blind to it. We only see the tip of the iceberg. We don't see that it is under it. Difficult to catch, no? <laughs> Difficult to catch. Because we, we are used to catch conditions. No, we see only the positivity. We, our mind is never geared to the negativity. When you look at the night, you see only the stars. We never see the gap between. But then we train our mind to be conscious, but what we aim for is unconsciousness. <laughs> mindfulness is aiming to unmindfulness. Consciousness <laughs> yeah, yeah. is aiming to unconsciousness. Perception is leading to the unconscious, unperception. So that is why it says, it is very nicely you can put into the picture. When you say the materialities, patavi apu tejo vayo, you know it? No. But the, the hardness, mm-hmm. the liquidity, heat and the movement. These are the four elements that is what we call the materiality. But they can't exist unless there is a gap in between. But we never see the gap because we feel that something lucky. We see the nihilistic, something destructive. Instead we see hardness is better. All the positivity our minds have, our faculties are very sensitive. But whenever it goes to the space in between, our mind gets lost. But now scientist says, out of this materiality, only 2% matter is there, maximum 98% is empty. But we see only the 2% matter, and we claim it is not you, it is me, you, me, otherwise kill you and all the kind of thing. But if you know what you are fighting is 98% of the emptiness, but it is all empty and grudges and the heat, the, the, the aversion and the, the jealousy and kind of thing. So that is the matter. And in the pain, between two pain and pleasure, always there is a pain pleasure situation is there. You never see. But if you observe, 80% of your day you are in no pain, no pleasure. But you never appreciate it. Instead you go for hobbies. You go for novels. You go for telephones. You go for TVs. You go for all the kinds of things. You don't get the no pain, no pleasure. 
And as far as the perception is concerned, the Buddha says, na sanya sanyi, na opi sanyi, na visanya sanyi, na vibhuta sanyi. You come to a perception, it is not the day-to-day cause of perception. But you are not unconscious also. You are not, no perception also. There is a kind of a perception that is the what explains the middle part. That perception is the what you get when in between two breaths. When the breath is reducing, you can't say no consciousness, but it's a strange kind of consciousness. Only human being can perceive it. Animals will know. And as far as the intentions and fabrications are concerned, whole life we are manipulating, manifesting, fabricating. But when the breath happens completely without any motion, without any will, without any uh, uh, volition, that is the real breath, calm and beautiful breath, that is what the middle part. And when I am going to, if I am going to say that each one of us have a will, the real believer of God will say no. He says to will this up to the God, you have no, you are saying to be your creatures, it is God will decide. But luckily enough, the Saint Aquinas told, he convinced the Catholic Church, there is a will. Their education is good. Knowing that education, the Aquinas got the word, and then only he became the father of education. And 200 years ago, in Germany, Schopenhauer took the subject of will, and he told Aquinas is correct. Will is there, but all will is evil. All will, will is evil. And then everyone told he is nihilistic, destructive, and Shobhanava never denied his, uh, you, have, you can read the book on the bill. And later the Nietzsche came, back the thing, and then onward Western world started to feel whatever we are going to do, we are, what we do is manipulations. The nature is the best combination. Whenever you are adjusting, it will reflect back and you have to bear the consequences. So when the breath, seeing and looking, looking is dirty, seeing is good. Looking is a reaction, seeing is an action. Hearing and listening, listening is an action. Sorry, hearing is an action, listening is a reaction. Selective, you are there. So Buddha is asking, go from will to no will situation. Go to the intention to Something happening that is called Taoism. That is called Tatata. And then, no friction. Everything is happening just like a blooming flower is there. Sunlight comes, it blooms. A Tao say we I know. Tao? Tao said that. Huh? Taoism means. Tao. Taoism, that is what is in the China and Japan. The way. The way. The natural way. The nature. It says the. the the, the Tao that can be explained is never the eternal Tao. Eternal Tao cannot be explained. You can't put it into formulas. Taoism is such a complex and such a changing thing. You just observe it. You are neutral observer, distance observer, then everything is perfect. No attention. No, no, no frustration. And the consciousness also come to the Aridasana Vijnana and they are it's just like a court is there, no cases, then what is the use of a judge? <laughs> there is a hospital, no patient, then what is the use of the doctor? I likewise, then when there is no cases, vijnana becomes nullified, none and void. And that vijnana is the one that the is most, when they say it's a primordial, most healthy, and never making any friction, and that is the what we are yeah, going to go into. And where does it go? Where it disappears? Which one? The, the vinyane. When it, it has no purpose, it just... Um, it, is that what all it extinguishes? So the example given is, when there is a whirlpool in the water, and it ceases to exist, what happened to the whirlpool? The same water. The water body is there. And there's a flame, and no fuel. Flame, where, where does it go? And we look at the picture of you in a mirror, and the mirror is turned. What happened to the image? Where does it go? Because the image is a hallucination. 
It is not reality. The whirlpool, what you are, is it's a condition. The fire is a condition. It is not reality. When the fire is there, you see it, but it is extinguished, you ask where it goes. No answer, because that the existing existence of fire is the one you have to consider and see how fast it is changing. Is there something called hard and core, fast, routine, like fire? No. It's a changing phenomenon. So when the Anitasana Vinyane happens, it can never come back because it's gone. Anitasana Vinyane you can't explain in terms of time and space. That is the point that time and space become null and void. Whenever the Vinyana happen, time and space come into being. And the time and space is a hallucination. From there from the condition mind. And upon that only the world is being created. So when the time and uh, space come into extinction, there is no friction. And that is, that is well established in the scientific, even in particle physics now. In the science itself it has been explained, that is why the Buddha's uh, the discovery has become reiterated now, understood and well established. But if you are doing inside meditation, easily you can understand the scientific discoveries. But the scientists can't understand, because they are based upon the I, I Newtonian physics. To Newtonian physics, no. They can't. They can't. So I, to, I know Buddha and you told the people not to question these kind of things, but I just don't, it's just very difficult to go upon this question not asking yourself if this, the, the human, if the nature in the world is subject to this randomness, how come that there is such a systematic way to get out of it? So that is called intelligent design. And now in America, intelligent design versus natural selection fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Intelligent design is the one the church is backing. And natural selection is what the scientists are doing. So some portions of the American uh, governments or that means states, they say is if you are teaching in the class the, the natural selection, Charles Darwin, mm-hmm. you must select, you must teach intelligent design. And there was a case and judge uh, denied it. He says no, the intelligent design, the God creation is not a must. And then there are big row. You have to read The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Which, uh, yeah, Dawkins. And he is explaining. He is explaining this intelligent design business. Hawking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. the ten years, the, the bestseller. The Richard Dawkins, the, Richard Dawkins, uh, the God Delusion. So, you know what I mean is, now why I mean, of course nobody can, but this question may not be answered like this, but then why is the universe and everything made in this systematic way if it is all an illusion and we are supposed to get out of it? That's what I mean. I mean, <laughs> So that uh, you can say, you can draw this clu- uh, the, the conclusion that everything is happening in a way, but when you are going to this thin slicing of the time, there is no such a formula. Your way of looking at this one is not the way I am looking. So then is it bad karma that we are born as humans that we don't understand? That's if you are mean. misusing humanness, you are worst karma. If you are using this to understand, this is the best karma. That is why the Buddha says, don't miss the chance, be the opportunities, make use the chance to understand this, this formula. And that is the biggest pleasure you can experience in this life. And if you are in the same agenda and going to follow with this worldly knowledge, utter waste of time. So if we don't understand and we want to understand, is that our purpose? If you do not understand... I mean, is that... I'm trying to connect it <laughs> to what she was explaining, like it all just sounds so... such a... the why of it all, like such a... Such so complicated and um, why are we born into something that we have no... I mean, I get it. If we if we don't go upon this, we will go through so much suffering in so many lives. That, that I understand. But then, I don't understand if it is a pinna to be born with a brain like this and to have the ability to analyze it, then it just doesn't go to my head why we are supposed to do this. I mean, why? Do what? I mean, why is it? Why? 
which force decided to make the mind in this way and say, but actually you have to do it a different way. Simply you can say, your foolishness. <laughs> Avijja. Avijja is the main cause. Idiot. Irrational. Foolish. Self-inflicting suffering. So that is why the Buddha says, most dramatic thing in the world, the day you see it, laugh at it. How much are we inflicting our own suffering? Telling this is my suffering, don't fight it, don't get up to me, it is my suffering. Let me have so, my own reason. So are you saying we're always the cause of our of suffering? Yeah. Of our own suffering? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, are we the cause of... Yes. Not the are we, am I? Am I? Am, am I? I always? Yes, 100%. Then, then am I imagining all that external stuff? Outside? Yes. <laughs> That is one extreme, which he says that is hallucination. I mean, I, I hate to bring it up, but I mean, if this is the obvious question, I mean, yeah. the obvious one. Like At least you have to put when, that. Put when that a mass in. genocide happens, did I attract that? Did I create that? Not creating that. It becomes a genocide because you have paid attention to that. You have thousands of other things to pay attention. But instead, you are so keen about the genocide. So why? Who? Ah. Who? But I didn't pay attention to it. I was forced to pay attention no, to that it. Is, that is what the condition is. That is what the yeah. your perception. Yeah. And that is your culture, <coughs> your upbringing. And there, in Sri Lanka, there is a catching of fish with the big uh, mother. And when the, the harvest is bringing up, people are running to see. Too much of thousands of fish suffering each other and fighting each other. and they are. So some people entertain it. Some people entertain it by looking at that people are taken, the fish, huge amount taken out of the sea, and they are in utter suffering. Some people entertain it. See, the basic, yeah, I basic, know, I don't know how about you see, the basic, basic huh? problem is we always try to understand an unconditioned through our conditioned mind. And this is an impossible thing to do. We are yes, always I won't say impossible, possible, no, possible if you know yeah. the art. Yeah, you know yeah, the, right. you know so the, you're saying if somebody came in here with a gun and yeah. shot him, yeah. it didn't happen. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't say that's it. What, it that's become, what I mean. It becomes a matter for you as far as you pay the attention. That is what the sword well, is your cat. He's, he's, bled, he's, he's dead now. Yeah. <laughs> and so that only he's only dead because I... Okay, what's that physical law, the act of observing something, the... The handle some law. The act of observing something changes it. That is why the solid engine power waves collapse into the matter as far as the consciousness is inspired. The hair, not Herxheimer, a hairball, something. So is that what you mean? Yeah, that is what the I put my attention on him. That is what the science there says. Solid engine power wave will collapse into matter whenever the consciousness hit. If the consciousness is not hitting, it will be a wave, no no gravity, no shape, no matter. So it will change means, into, collapse into the matter due to the conscious mind. There is so no consciousness, it's another thing. But then there has to be, then there has to be parallel multi-universes where that does happen. No, that is there. It is not creating any suffering as far as you are not paying attention. Once attention paid, I will keep this safe. You as a one being, you have Eye faculty, ear faculty, nose, tongue, body and mind. But you don't, do you believe at a time only one thing can work? Do, do I believe? I don't know. Oh. Hey, don't take it very personally. No, that I will, I don't You think. take very, everything very personal. The whole never principle. Mind. Mind. You're very judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will no, I'm trying to. I will I'm trying to understand it. Am I no, I am, I am giving a formula. Yeah. One person means his facu- six faculties. I, ear, no, tongue, body, mind. At a time only one is working. That's the way the Buddha is answered. So supposing that's a very picturesque thing happened. Now you are opening, looking at with your open eye, open mouth also. Do you think what happened at that time? The sounds. What happened to the smells? What happened to the touch of your hair with the chair? Does it matter or does it make any volition for you? Does it matter that I'm only focusing on one? No, you are now dragon to the sight. The eye faculty is fully open and you are absorbed there. So what happened to the other five faculties? 
Because of your attention, it is your, your five faculty become full occupied, that means all the other five faculties go on and Right. So therefore, what is you what you see is that means you are foregoing hearing, foregoing smelling, foregoing tasting, foregoing touching, foregoing thinking. So these at that time there may be some hear something to hear, all these things immaterial for you. Won't make any hear test for you. It decides due to your attention. Is there anything that's absolute besides death? Besides the death. No, absolute things are there. The absolute is going to come to your conditioned mind which has been diverted to a particular thing. And how it happens to one knows. With what agenda you select the eye faculty or ear faculty or nose, you have no rights. It's a completely uh, without any agenda. Chance. From morning to the evening, chance working. And ultimately, once it happens, you are fighting for it. Telling this is, I see, I know, and all the kind. But you don't know how much you are foregoing by selecting one faculty. Uh -huh. So therefore, you are instead, if you can bring the attention to the everything primordial and keep everything open, that is a complete new idea. New so are you saying that only one faculty can occupy the space and in that moment? Yeah, it is in the dicotidon plants. There's a one topmost, uh, the, uh, how do you call it, the bud. It is produced in a chemical to suppress all the other buds. That is how the, the utmost, uh, the, how do you call it, meristem is taking the upper hand as going. Likewise, in our five faculties, one thing at a time take the upper hand, it suppresses the other. Therefore, selecting one thing means closing the face of the world. You don't know it. <coughs> selecting one thing, we say, I am unmarried. If I am selecting one girl, my wife will not be happy with if I am looking at other girls. But if I am unmarried, I can see any girl with full love. <laughs> <laughs> but you consider the married life is happier than the unmarried. The Buddha is unmarried people can see everything the equal. So with the open ticket. It's an example. <laughs> So meditation is giving the full time for the brain, full time for the, this thing to happen. Don't, you don't put formulas. You don't ask, you don't start forcing it. Just natural everything happens. So you are living with yourself. You are living here. You are living now, least complicated. Instead, if you are living in the past and the future, you are living in other places and others' mind, it is, you are tackling the sphere, it is, you are not qualified. So complicated. We are so worried about the past and the future. Other places and other mind. Mind your own business. Meditation means mind your own business. <laughs> I mean, the inside meditation means mindfulness. It's mind your own business. Then it appears to the body. Thank you. Mind your own mind. Mind your own mind. Mind your own mind.